Welcome to the Podness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Go ahead, just say. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Podness, show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm one third of the Podness, your boy Tiz, and I'm along with. Other third of Podness. Look, y'all, I just got off work. I ain't for the shit today. <laughs> it's the Padawan here. The third. What's that? Na, 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 Hey, it's fakes. Hey. It blakes. What's going on? Hey. <laughs> oh, man, I was not. Um, so, yeah, man, we back. Uh, we're a little late this week. Y'all got mental health difficulty. We had some technical. Um, but we here. We got y'all. And the partners won't go let y'all down. We right back at you with Station That Ass. Episode 46, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes. With six more episodes to the year. Episode that Big 52. Y'all already know. Yeah, we're going to have to think of some cool. Day. But um, we here. Um, I want to start this week off with a quick mental health check in. Just quick, just how is everybody doing? How is everybody feeling? Um, yeah, I get, definitely got some things that I feel like I want to share. Uh, so, but I'll start with y'all, man. Feeling it. Uh, today I'm cool. Um, week's been a up and down week, but I'm not too pressed on it. Uh, I'm still trying to be optimistic. And I feel that's the best thing for me to do personally is be optimistic when faced with any trials and tribulations. Because as, if they are pessimistic, if I become pessimistic, that's really not a good way for me to be on mentally. So try to stay optimistic when I face any trials and tribulations. So um, right now I'm stepping over my trial. And, um, about to hop over my tribulation. So I'm thinking it's working. So I'd say this week is going to work out good. We're almost at the end of the week, so only time will tell, but I feel that everything will work out for us. Better. Right on. Is it anything we caught you this weekend? Just keep being yourself. Keep being yourself and being open if I need to vent. You are. How you doing, man? And I'm pissed off, man. I ain't even gonna lie, y'all. Uh, shit pissed me off today, and it won't just work. It's outside of work. It's some, yeah, it's some serious shit. And, um... We got a ride yeah. on some shit? Nah, nah, nah. It's not no ride on some shit, but it pissed me off. Or whatever. It's just kind of some. I don't offline even want to bring shit. it up, but hmm? some offline shit. Yeah, offline shit. We'll speak whatever, offline. But, we'll, yeah, we'll have a we'll have but, a real time. but yeah, I ain't even really. I ain't gonna phase it. I'm just glad we are here, and uh, it's a lot of shit we could talk about today. So yeah, this should cheer me up. I know. Uh, mm-hmm. How can we support you this week or going until we be there for? Man, y'all always hit there for me, man. Well, we doing the podcast tonight. This is this is my help for real. For real, this is some shit. I'm gonna get over it. Or whatever, because really it don't even involve me. So yeah. Oh man, that's the worst shit when some bullshit going on that affects your life, but it ain't even involving you. Mm-hmm. I hate when other people bullshit come over to your talk. Like my shit, I got enough shit going on. I don't need your yeah. But we'll talk all that. We 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 I mean that just tell me we need to have a brother's talk at some point this weekend before the live like mm-hmm. talk. I refuse to let another motherfucker shit affect my life at this point in age I am. I refuse. Uh, yeah, I feel like the common denominator in all situations when I have a problem in my problem if I'm facing that problem I see that I'm the problem so once I voice how I feel about it if ain't nothing around that gonna change I tend to separate myself from that problem then I have no more problem because I know if uh-huh. they stay with the problem it's gonna be big problems and I don't want no problem cause you don't want no problem, problem. problem. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. So I guess uh, I'll go ahead and share mine. Um, it's been another eye-opening week. So y'all already know, last I shared that I had went to the psychiatrist. I basically had like some, felt like something broke, my brain broke. I ain't been right since. Um, have panic attacks and have been uh, diagnosed with general disorder, major depressive disorder. And I'm on meds, uh, been prescribed to not only the meds, but to have grief counseling and general therapy once a week. So got the general therapist, already had that lined up from just, you know, before. Um, but tonight, you know, I went to the assessment grief counseling. And it was another psychiatrist. So the, my psychiatrist is who one thing. The grief counseling was through this website I found. Uh, I shared it on the last video. Basically, you can get like psychiatry, you therapy, counseling, whatever it is that you need, like mental health wise. You can get it from there. You pay a flat rate every month and you get either a weekly service or a monthly service, depending on what you need. Um, but I'm getting the grief counselor through them. They basically, for me and that person, don't work out the first. John didn't switch them. So, uh, but anyway, I had to do the assessment tonight. So I go into this psychiatrist to get assessed for grief. Counselor. And then I come out of there with a fucking third diagnosis. So now I've been uh, diagnosed with panic disorder. Um, and it explains a lot. 
But the shit that's fucking me up is nobody told me why, like, why I broke or why a week and a half ago I was just a normal guy. And now, like, I don't know all this shit. So that's why I'm at on this journey. Uh, the med still ain't done much uh, yet for four to six weeks. Everything is a journey now. Everybody um, Finally broke down and went ahead and took leave from work because I freaked out at work. Thought about putting hands on and uh you know you joke about it but in my years of working i thought about it. and I would, my body still hurt from having many panic attacks all damn day so my body feel like i'm still on that but we here huh. i'm with my bros which is always a space we about to talk that oh, shit yeah, my um only thing i need to support is just you know if i do need to pull up in let's do that but i think since pat already kind of opened the door i think that that's definitely what i want to pull up maybe tomorrow uh saturday at some point in the day or the Friday evening or Saturday or during the day early. And, uh, you know, just chop it up real quick and just kind of do the brother check-in offline. That's how y'all can best support. Other than that, man, y'all, as always, appreciate the fact that God made y'all my bro. But, yeah, so like that's where? where we had this with that. Um, I think we're going to do this every week, just kind of check in, see where everybody is. Um, feel like sometimes, you know, definitely with the hustle and bustle of life, sometimes the podcast is the first time we be to talk to each other that week. Instead of jumping right into, like, topics and shit, like, yeah, let's do more checking in on each other first. Make sure we are. Right. And if we're not, I right, make sure we got a plan of action. So after the topic, we can be there for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, champs. So um, now that we done got that, I uh, talked about you. And I think that's a perfect segue to kind of get into a uh, facial segment. So uh, face what we talking about. This squid, week, squid, squid game. Squid game, squid game, squid game. And Alice in Borderland. Ain't nobody talking about Alice in Borderland yet. But they will soon be on that. But right now, we gonna first jump into Squid Game. If you haven't heard, Squid Game, Korean series out on Netflix. All our outlets are talking about it right now. Um, I brought it up between the bros, so we've all took a sample of it. Me personally, I finished the series because on my downtime, I binge watch stuff. Because if it's a movie, I'm gonna watch the movie two or three times just so I can get every detail. If it's a series, I'm gonna binge watch it right then. And then I have to rewatch it the whole of all over again to make sure I get every detail. Right now, I just finished watching Squid Game a couple of days ago. Haven't started rewatching it yet, but boy, oh boy, I'm not going to give you no spoilers. I'm not going to go into detail about every episode. We just going to go over the overview of what we've seen so far. Um, I believe it's y'all up on episode one, right? Yeah, I got the one. We I wasn't able to get to the one. rest of it, but I got the one. One was trippy enough. We can definitely cover, we can definitely cover what we've seen so far. And Let's I can get on just a little bit of the overview of it. So as far before we go into episode one, just an overview of the series, like Squid Game itself, it's, it's a journey of, what can I say, dedication, desperation, um, revenge, and just the human humanistic elements of each person. You feel like what we're willing to do, what we're not willing to do just to be able to yes. survive. Boy, I'm up Hold to on. episode five. <sighs> so I got a theory about something. Good. But I'm scared to go there because I don't want to spoil nothing for myself either. And no, I definitely don't want to fuck up Pat's I, experience. Like I said, I, I ain't but you've seen the first episode, right, Pat? Yeah, I've seen the first episode. Okay, so, you, I, I so, you've seen the, so you've seen the old dude. Yeah, I've seen the All old right. dude. Okay. And I openly so, watch spoilers, so I don't even care. My, <laughs> the, my theory is the old dude is this nigga daddy or some wild shit like that, like, or he related to him or something, or they can each other somehow in a way, but they don't realize it somehow, like they've been separated I'll or something like, like this. Some shit like that. It is some wild shit with that old motherfucker. But that's all I'm gonna give you. It is some wild shit with him. Because they've been the getting too buddy buddy. They got some weird similarities and shit. Oh, like it's just some weird it's, shit going on with them. It's two major flips. It's two major flips. So you already into it. So I can't get because Pat ain't into it always. So I can't eat too much. But it's two major flips. Once you get past the episodes you at, you can get one big flip. It's two major flips on the last two episodes. You're gonna be like, <laughs> which oh shit no nah, because then i'm gonna Sweet. fuck it all oh! so, yo so, if y'all ain't seen this show it. this show is fucking amazing I, it's, like, it's a very good show i got my wife on everything people who watched our show y'all see the different type of stuff we watch and y'all see the different type of stuff i recommend i have never really recommended a series i recommend movies because i'm a movie hater i consider myself to be movie buff but just on series i'm an eclectic person but i recommend this series not just based on everybody in america Rating the top top series right now and all that. I don't I don't care what nobody else really thinks. So about what I think. And I think everybody should take a sample of this movie, of this series. Give it at least a three or four episode chance. You feel me? 
it's subtitles. So if you don't like reading, it may not be for you. But if you are a mentalist like myself and my cohorts, you may want to watch it. Ain't nothing wrong with reading. Elevate your mind. Um, but this Korean series is on point. Uh, like I said, desperation, no. desperate. It got drama. You got a little bit of comedy in there. Um, action, uh, mystery. Every element of a good no. series is in this series. I'm gonna tell um, y'all this, man. I ain't say this. Enough. I ain't never think I'd see a show that I would put up there with Breaking Bad. This show yeah, is man. like, like this is the best this show I've seen since Breaking Bad. And I and I really like Watchmen. I really like a lot of shows, but this is really taking the cake because it is so many dynamics. Like, man, if you like, if you don't like gore, don't watch it because it'd be some niggas dying. Yes. But, um, it, it, it is it, it is a rated R show. Um, yeah, it does have blood and gore. Don't, don't let it your kids it. pull up on this one, champ. Not, yeah, not what you do. It's not a. Uh, uh, anime. Anime. Every first episode, it's not an anime. At least a good forty to fifty people, probably more than that. I I stop counting, but at least a good forty to fifty people die throughout the entire third act of the show. The first episode, like you're just watching minute by minute, more and more people get murked. Mm. But you can't look away because it's so intriguing the way they do it. Um, What's the last game you see them play? Tug of War. Woo. I heard about it. Like I, that tug of war shit. That old nigga was slick with that shit. I was like, what the that fuck? That didn't work. That tug of war shit. Mm, that was a good game. Yeah. Red light, green light. Yo, red light, green light was, yo, the first episode, y'all. If you ever played like childhood games, like in the hood, like red light, green light, and fuck, mother may I and shit like that, like hopscotch even, like all your childhood games that you played with your homies in the neighborhood have been turned into these demented ass kill thing, kill machines. Like you just you'll die. And, and you these people signed up for this shit. Voluntarily. Voluntarily. Now the Yo. premise of the game, this is the key, this is the key element everyone has to remember. Now, every time someone perishes during the game, I think it's another hundred thousand added onto the pot that you mm -hmm. win. Or that mm -hmm. it's possible for you to win. But the key thing is everyone joins this game voluntarily. The only way the game ends is if there's a winner at the end or if, if a majority of the people decide together they want to just stop the game altogether. Yep. But remember, the more people die, the more money is added onto the pot we could possibly win. So, and everyone in this game is in deep, deep financial problems or deep problems in their own personal life. Yeah, they all like they gamblers and shit. people who have lost shit. And again, yeah. it's like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. It's well, like, roughly, do I want to go back to this roach infested life I was living, or do I want to go ahead and try to get this money and try to out outlast these other motherfuckers? Do I yeah, die fast or die slow? People, it's the cornucopia of ages of different people. You feel me? It's not just all Korean because it's one um, it's one guy from Pakistan in the movie as well, Ali. Um, great guy, great guy, Ali, man, great guy. And I just want to say this: it's a lot of people on Twitter right now that I've heard. Or down in saying Wu can't hate on Sang Wu man. At the end of the day, he's a realist. Once y'all really, once y'all get through this series, this series, y'all gonna look back at Sang Wu like, you know what? I can't hate him. I know he did some fucked up shit, but I really I can't know. hate him. I don't know. I ain't there yet. <laughs> Maybe after episode nine, after episode five, fuck Sang Wu. Yeah, I was saying that too. I'm with the other Twitter, 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 Twitter heads. Hey, y'all on Twitter, I, I'm with y'all. Um, but that's a crazy ass. <laughs> if you like, if you like psychological thrillers, if you like action, if you like uh, see even some like dark. If you like kind of dark off beat, um, yes. Because I ain't gonna lie, I I died laughing when the uh, old man was running on the first episode. Like when he was running, he kept yeah. Like he was, I was like, why is this nigga gritted like that? Nigga, so cheese hard as a bitch. These so motherfuckers smooth. is dying around him, and this nigga just. But you see why he went? You see why he went because his movements were so slow and so smooth. Everybody else was running. When they would stop, they would joke. And it was, you couldn't yeah, he was glad that they hit the brakes like, fast. <sighs> he also won't try to push it. He was like, yeah, I'm going to uh, stop a few seconds before I think this thing about the 20 sure I got set up. Uh-huh. But at the end, right, the people that made it, the people that made it all the way to the end, did they, after a while, did they just kill the rest? I the think people that did not make it got killed, yeah. yeah. So if you was, yeah. if you okay. were still behind that line, it was like, it's oh, well, you still lost. Good day. And it, and you had to be at the, at the point at a, by a certain time, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. 
every game got a got a time limit. So if you lose the game, you you lose. If you don't participate in the game, you lose. So you better you just better, win. You better win. <laughs> <laughs> All you better do is win. You can't do it. Even, like, even though the game is a sadistic game at times, the game has morals. And the creators of the game always want everyone to have an equal opportunity to win, but they don't want no one to have no advantage. So like, I, I, okay, so, I mean, if they make an American version of this series, I don't know. I like it. I don't know. If it's a I just want, damn, an America. American version. I just want to know. I love this one. I want it to be a season two. That's, that's all I can say. I'm hooked. I've watched every episode. I'm going to start watching it again, the, the first season again. So I heard the, but, uh, but, go ahead. I heard the creator of it, like he he was trying to push the story like ten years ago or whatever. Mm-hmm. He been trying and to get out there for a long time. They denied it, and then now it's like the top series on Netflix. Yes, it is, and the top series in my heart too. Alice in Borderland. Before we move on, now if you like if you like Squid Game, I really I this is what I was saying. Watch Squid Game first, then mm-hmm. watch Alice in Borderland. Like I feel like you're more likely to get engaged with Alice in Borderland once you watch Squid Game because it sets your brain up for that type of um, thing. Because Alice in Borderland, its first episode, I've only gotten through the first episode of that one, but it's a little bit slower Mm -hmm. to build up than Squid Game. Like Squid Game, it starts off like the dude regular life is kind of off. So it's like Mm -hmm. you you got some shit to kind of get you going early. You know it's going to be some shit going on. With the Alice in Borderland, like you're literally just going through these people mundane ass day until the shit jumps off. But when yep. the shit jumps off, it jumps the fuck, fuck off. off. Like the fuck off. If you a person like me that likes to watch uh movies and shows and likes to like try to try to like figure shit out, if you like puzzle games, if you like shit like that, Alice in Borderland mm, is, is, is your for shit. Because like you into it. Yeah, oh, oh, the more you get into it, you would think the story will unfold more as you find out details. But as you find out more details, the story gets more complicated. So it just draws you in further because you want to find out more to find out more. Yeah, it, I hope they don't fuck it up. But it reminds oh. me of Lost. Mm-hmm. If you if y'all remember that show Lost, mm-hmm. it's like yeah. it's what it's really good. And at the end of each show, instead of you having more answers, you have more questions. Like yes. the first episode ended and I was more confused about what the fuck I had just watched than I had. Like, like I was like, okay, I finally got it. I get what's going on. So they, okay. So now they about to do this. I knew they was about to do it again, but then all of a sudden they showed the sky and I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Okay. So, so where are they at? Is this still earth? Like, what the fuck is this shit? So it's one of them shows, y'all. Um, if you have not seen it, please, please go see these two shows, yo. I, I yeah. cannot advocate for it enough. Um, one is um, Squid Game is all Korean. It's a Korean. Um, it's a Korean film, a Korean series. Alice in Borderland is a Japanese series. And it's best if you put the American voice on. Don't put the subtitles yeah. on. Put the yeah. Ameri- Put the dub on because not only will you actually understand it. But it's also funnier because you know the vocal yeah. inflections don't be matching the actual <laughs> like feel of the scene sometimes. So it, it'll give you like a little chuckle because like it'd be some crazy shit going on and be like, hey, yeah, you know, and like yeah. motherfucker, it's fire on your ass. How are you talking like that? It's <laughs> not nigga, you are burning alive. Tell some, yeah. Like, like, you know, so uh like you said, it's good time. But those two series got me hooked. Um, I finished both. I'm upset I finished both, but uh, I grew up in the 80s and 90s, and I hate watch, hate waiting week to week to watch one episode. I, could, I, just, yeah. I have the opportunity to move. I'm going to binge it and then just binge it again because, hey, it's worth watching again. It's definitely, it's definitely <laughs> good enough to watch the series twice. I recommend it. Once again, Squid Game and Alice in Borderland, both on Netflix. If you don't have Netflix, get it just so you can watch those two. Indeed. Yo. Steal somebody else's password yeah. real quick. Exactly. I'll let your grandma she ain't using it. She ain't using it all the time. Hmm. Ain't that many yeah. episodes of Mad Lock on uh, or gun smoke. <laughs> Nans, whatever your grandmother wants. In the heat of the night. Yo! I got trouble. Oh, oh man. That's, um, but yeah, so um, check out those two shows, the Squid Game and then Alice in Borderland. I promise you, though, if you watch Alice in Borderland first, it may not suit you. 
if you watch Squid Game first, even just the first episode of that, and then watch Alice in Borderland, you will be more intrigued by Alice in Borderland. It, it, yeah. It's literally like a good pairing of shows. It's like if you want to have like a Thursday night lineup, those are like you could if you don't want to binge and you want to kind of have like that suspense where you watch it weekly. A good way to do it is like watch one and watch uh, Squid Game and then watch Alice in Borderlands because it's like they're good. good they're good segues in. So yeah, good check idea. them out, please. Face face be coming with some shit. Sometimes it be like really just like, Mm-mm. but then a lot of times it be some shit that be like. Just but my house is That's definitely a Squid Game house because me and the wife are on that now. We got our new uh little date show now. You know? <laughs> Add that to the list. We're also watching Loki together because I, I have yet to watch that full series. I also recommend Big Mouth. Who? Big, Big Mouth. Big Mouth. Oh yeah. Big Mouth. Is that the one with the monster? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. with a few yeah. monsters. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Me and the wife definitely watched that. We already got the yeah, yeah. was on that. New season coming out. October. When? New season coming out. Ooh. I will get back on that. Oh, no, bro. That's good. Well, good computer. I don't even know what to call shit no more when it's show no more. Good media. Yeah, because ain't nothing on TV no more. It's just all streaming shows. Like, TV ain't no, shit no more. If you want to get a good show, you got to go to it. I stay there for the old folks. Um. So, yeah, man. Please, please, please watch those two shows. And make sure you stay watching us. Because we are about to get the top MC. Of the 2000s, our tournament continues. I can't stand your way. Our tournament <laughs> continues. <laughs> if you watched last episode, what he just said is going to make so much more sense to you. And it's gonna, so go back and watch episode uh, 45. Uh, I would say actually watch the past couple episodes. And uh, I think it's 38 um, when we first started this. But basically, uh, this is where we've gotten to on our journey. We're going into the semifinal bracket tonight. So we're setting our final four. Um, the way we got here is we started establishing. We, well, we even talked we talk about hip hop a lot on the show anyway. But um, when we wanted... When, when we have conversations and debates about you know, our favorite artists and greatest about this or whatever, we wanted to establish some criteria to do that. So we came up with three criteria. We came up with uh, your marketability, your, your earning potential. So like how how much is your face card and your, your brand drawing record sales, um, drawing concert sales, merchandise sales, brand deals, endorsements? Like how much is your face earning you money and revenue? Um, then we went into uh, lyricism. So how well do you put words together? Like tondra, your metaphors, your ed- how well you put idioms together. Um, yeah, your cadence, flow, the rhyme patterns you choose, the the way you ride a beat, uh, all of that, you know, just how well mm-hmm. you write. Um, and you could not have a ghostwriter. You had to have your own original lyrics. So you can lyrics. Um, and then we had um, your overall MC, your stage presence, how well you project and get your point across through your presence as you're delivering your words. So how much you sell a bar, whether it be a cappella on stage, whether it be on a beat, even like how much are you making me feel what you're saying, as opposed to me just hearing what you're saying and saying, oh, that's a good way to do that. I actually feel it. Um, so yeah, we came up with those three criteria. And when we did that, then it was just like, well, obviously we got to use these. So let's do that. So uh, we thought it would be too big of a task because we had already kind of behind the scenes and talking. It's like, we're going to be all over the place if we try to do like the greatest of all time straight out. So we spread it into two categories. We started right now with of the 2000s. From here, we're going to go to the time, I mean, of the greatest is before 2000. And then we're going to have those two, the pause for our help. We've already started, like I said, we've got um, opening round and now the final round. So we're going to now give our picks to now the quarterfinals. The pod squad has voted and I have their votes in front of me as well. As you guys know, each of us gets a vote and the pod squad, their choice counts as two votes. So you have to have three out of the five or basically a majority decision in order for that MC to move on to the next round. So it is possible for one partner and the pod squad to outvote the other two partners. So it's important that you guys vote. Get your votes out there. I saw a few more votes. Let's get the votes out there. Um, The link will be on the Twitter, on our social, and under this video and podcast as soon as it drops. So get out, vote, vote, so your voice can be heard. Um, Yeah, let's get into it. Right now, we are at the top eight of still looking at Lamar versus Rick Ross at 5 now. Joe Button faces J. Cole and Big Sean Squatters. It's time for the partner. Which one of those do y'all want to start with first? 
or should we just go from the top to the bottom? Wait, 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 and wait, wait, uh, let me make sure I wait, share this, family. I want to make sure to get on the end on this easy. as well. We're going to start with the easy and then go to the We're going to start with um, Big Sean and Two Chains. Big Sean, Shane, on the board right now. So, um, anyone of y'all want to first? I'm going to take it first. Okay. I'm going to say um, when it comes to their um, marketability, I'm going to say Two Chains, Titty Boy. Um, he's been doing this thing and he's been doing this thing well. Um, his crossover marketability is very well. He's accepting a lot of different markets. I mean, his entrepreneurial game is where it needs to be so he can push himself in different realms where I feel that Big Sean hasn't and can't. Um, don't get it wrong, Big Sean is proper. He can't put himself in different lanes as well, but the lanes that two chains can get in. I don't believe that Big Sean can or has the potential to get in those lanes. Um, okay. As far as lyricism, I'm going to have to go with Two Chain. Um, his wordplay is just ridiculous when it comes to his caliber of rapper or MC, I should say. Um, nowhere near God level, but his ability to take a word and make it do what it do, I should say, is on a level that Big Sean isn't now. Once again, devil's advocate, Big Sean is a good lyricist because, once again, he would have made it this far if he was. But better than two chains, he is. Um, stage performance, hands down, two chains. No words ever got to just hands down, two chains. So I'm giving it a 3 0 two chains. Okay. Okay. 3 0 two chains. We got our first 30 dirty. Pat, Pat, how, what say ye? Um, I. I think two chains is gonna win this anyway. I'll explain why, but I know you ain't gonna pick Big Sean. So <laughs> um let me just explain. Two chains got him on marketability, two chains got him on stage performance. Lyricism is was a coin flip to me because Big Sean got some lines. It's just that I don't like how he flow. Like two chains stays on beats. Big Sean, he stays on beat, but he tries to do too much and say too many words in between each lines and it throws him off. Trying to force uh, it off beat, yeah. He tries to force it, and I, I I feel like it's a lot of potential in Big Sean, but yeah, I'm gonna just give it a two chain. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to the next one. <laughs> so, so yeah, two one. I, no, I, y'all nah, both got all two chain. All right. Um. Well, this is where I'm at. I'm gonna say. Where do I want to start? This is. I had to listen to a couple of their tracks over to kind of refresh because I hadn't really listened to either one of them. I got them as a tie on this. They're both really good at what they do. Um, if I had to look at battle rap, I would say Big Sean is more of a, a mix. Like he punches and talks, whereas um, 2 Chains is more of a straight puncher like an ass. Punch, punch, punch. And both are masters, so I like um Similac. Yeah, I had to give them a tie on that. Yes. Um, as for the stage show. Stage show I gave it to. Um, I've seen that nigga do some wild shit on stage. So I definitely gave that to, um for for marketability. He changed faces everywhere. That nigga is on everything. He's like Frank's get hot. He put that shit on everything. He's on at, like like places that like he's like Snoop Dogg. Like the shit that you be like, what are you doing on this? And he's hosting someone there. So it's like I just see for me not to like I don't know what real estate or whatever, bitch. But as far as like making money off your face card and the pod squad, so we have our first ups of the night. Let's see where we go from here, y'all. Two I kind of felt like on. I kind of felt like that was gonna happen with the pod squad. Two chains. I didn't see the big Sean win coming. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, oh. God, I still think it was. I think I still thought it might be a possibility that uh I just like change music more problem. <clears throat> like I said, lyricism, I think they're just different. But you said what? Joe Button? And fucking Jake's fucking And no telling where we about to go. You want to go first or last? <laughs> I let one of y'all go first. Okay. Um I, so this was actually a tough oh go ahead, Pat. I ain't gonna oh, touch your uh, go ahead. Me, I don't be real simple. Um, pretty much. Uh lyricism. It's very hard to say or whatever. So I I really feel like both of them touch on uh, life subjects. They both have bars. You know what I'm saying? Like, as far as content go, they're, they're very versatile or whatever. So I got to look at other stuff. Uh, Joe Budden is marketable. But we're talking about rap. What he's marketable is at is in the podcast game, right? And in social media mm. and stuff like that. Which, if he was actually in the game still and he was actually okay. doing m- music, it would make him more marketable as far as a rapper, but he hasn't done that yet. 
he hasn't chose not to do that yet. So as far as like social medias and the podcast game, he is very marketable. But we're talking about rap. We're we're talking about J. Cole. J. Cole mentor is Jay's one. He's under Rock Nick too. He his 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 stats in the game having platinum albums with no features or, or whatever. He just has way more stats than Joe Button has. And I feel like the reason why is Joe Button was in that age where you just didn't mix shit all the way. You just put the shit out so you can have your, your, your cause you know what I'm saying? At that time we were more listening to lyrics than sound. Now we're more listening to sounds than lyrics or whatever. And I would say stage presence, it definitely go to Cole or whatever. So to tell you the truth, I, lyricism and marketability, they're kind of like, they're kind of tied up for me. But it's just the simple fact that Joe Button marketability is not in rap no more. It's in podcasts and social media that I have to give it to Cole. And just mm-hmm. Cole, Cole is just having an awesome two, three years lately. Like he's the only, he's the only rapper that ends up being the basketball player. And then the NBA starts looking at him and then drops a platinum album and then drop a tour. One of the first tours that ever came out. And then, and then maybe not the top MC. But the top rap artist at the time just drops yeah, in. Yeah. And he just does not do that for everybody. He did it. But he did it after he did a freestyle. After J. Cole did a freestyle on that artist beat. And, and he had to come in. Hey, hey man, you're the greatest person in the world. I don't want no smoke. You my friend. You are a great person. Why We're can't both we skin. be friends? Why can't we be friends? When and Copowers be laughing their ass off right now with you singing that shit. I know Sean, Sean, I know, yep, when my brother listened to this, he gonna be laughing <laughs> just because you did that. Anyway, so long story short, I'm gonna give it to Cole because he has more potential, more prowess, and more stats or whatever. Okay. I feel like if, if Joe Button probably would have the same backing as Cole did pretty much, he would probably be in a higher light as far as rap go, but his personality, all his antics and shit kind of got in the way of that shit. So, okay. And Face don't like him. So, I, I think <laughs> dude, I like his I, I like his podcast. You know. Or should I jump? I'll, take it. It. I, I'll go ahead. Now, I'll go this ahead. is the most biased voting. Yeah, it's, I know, it's right? Biased. Oh, God. Warning, voice. people who be coming in here. I knew this and me as soon as he said. It's about to happen right now, so you can go ahead and uh, click off if you triggered by that, because uh, Face about to say some shit, because he don't like Joe Bud. Like I've always said, opinions is like assholes. We all got one, so most of them stink. Y'all may think mine stink right now, but guess what? I don't care, because it's mine. I don't give a fuck. And if you don't like it, you can fast forward. Listen to the next minute's opinion, but right now is mine. I don't like Joe Biden. Um, I, I don't like his lyrics. I, I, I don't like his stage performance. I don't like his marketability. But gonna, <laughs> I don't like his marketability. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to be as unbiased as possible. Oh. Like your phone is being unbiased or whatever that is. Your phone like Joe Button. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Phone said you gonna get Joe Button, damn it. Fuck that shit. Um so I was saying. Words. If I'm giving an unbiased view. It's kind of, but J. Cole is still ascending where the other dude is plateaued and going on downward slope. So as J. Cole is still has um, his lyricism, his lyricism is still maturating and achieving new heights. Joe Button is. Um, so on lyrics, I want to give it to Cole because he's doing things right now that Joe, I don't think Joe can do. Um, overall, I'm going to say Joe is a good lyricist. I may not like him, but I'm not going to hate on a person's ability. He's a good lyricist. But better than Cole, it's hard for me to say Cole's Cole inches him out by this much. Just inches him out. Um, marketability, Cole being who he is and his personality and the aura of him and what he puts out about himself and what he tries to do in the community, that makes him able to step in different realms that Joe Button can't. But on the other hand, Joe Button's personality puts him in different arenas that the positivity of J. Cole won't allow him to. So overall marketability as a person and as a whole, I will go with Joe Button. But in the MC realm, I'm going to go with J. Cole. So per this contest and per this list we're going for, per our rules, I have to say J. Cole. But if we were just outside of our rules and we were being a tad 
and their marketability, I would go with Joe Budden. Now, stage performance and the MC ability, the ability to sway that crowd and give them that feel. Fuck Joe Budden. I don't feel he has none. <laughs> none at all. None. That's just it. Fuck Joe Budden. I don't feel he has no ability to move no crowd. Um, none. No. I've seen <laughs> I was just looking at him. I'm not gonna pump nothing up. I'm not gonna get down with none of the other Yo, Oh god, Joe Budden stole your girl back in fourth grade or something. Yo, like what the yeah. fuck? Yo, <laughs> I'm so angry with uh, this Joe Budden. But now J. Cole, on the other hand, um, he has that ability to sway the crowd. Like people get emotionally in tune. They feel his music. It gives them some some relation of what they used to go through. Like he he got that starter for the bottom type feel to him, but he's grounded. He hasn't outgrown his shoes. Just, he's still about the community. He's still saying what he needs to say in a real way, not sugarcoating, but giving it to you in a way that you can understand. It. You feel me? Everybody can understand. It. Not in a too complicated way, like you see some lyrics, some lyricism. Uh, some lyricist, excuse me, give you their give you their message, and you gotta break it down because it's so complicated. But the flow is so tight. His with Jake Colin reference, get it to you. His flow is so tight, but everybody understands him. That's that's why he's people mess with him on such a wide scale. You got people all age ranges that mess with Jake Cole. They're like, so you'll see all age ranges at his concerts. Joe Budden, I, I don't know who the fuck goes to a Joe Budden concert. Why the fuck would you? So waste your money. Um, more so, like so, a slaughterhouse. Just me. Now, if you're going to see the collective, hey, it's the collective that drew you in. It wasn't Joe Budden. And you need to realize that, people. It wasn't Joe Budden that drew you to their concert. It was the collective of artists there and their collective songs together it was not joe button realize well, to anybody who's watching this right face you crazy face you know joe button, no realize i don't know sir they're gonna let you have it in the comments let me have it and all my listeners let on anchor it. leave us a voice message let us know what you let me know i'm just saying man no joe button no now if you watch this reality show and all that other stuff you may be a joe button fan but we're talking about his music and his mc ability no joe button no like i'm talking to my kids no uh, uh. No, uh, uh. never said he was trash. Did not say that, but no. So I would say two, three. I mean two, one. Excuse me, J Cole. Only because, only because I can't give that. You feel me? Well, excuse me. Rewind that. Three zero, oh, J Cole. Because I can't give that one to um marketability. Got it. So J Cole wins three zero oh, only because marketability can't be given. Um, fuck boy. On totality. Oh man, I can have my own damn opinion. Shit, that's in the world, dude. That was a lot. Um, my you didn't go as hard as I thought you were. Though. I would say that was much more objective than I thought it would be. So kudos See? to you. See, um, <laughs> I, like I thought it was gonna be I a like lot more f bombs drop. I don't like what I don't like. If I don't like it, I don't like it. Like y'all was upset when I said I ain't like nah. So what? I'm a, I'm a Southern hater. I like Southern music. So what? I love Jay-Z. I love J.D. I love Beans. They from up north. But now. Well. But now. Joe Button. Um, I'll start with lyricism. The lyricism was hard for me. Um, but then I remember J. Cole is responsible for one of my top favorite bars of all time. The flow cold as the shoulders of gold digging hoes when broke me. Told y'all I'm focused. That is the motherfucking, like, to, to spit that bar. On a song with Jay Z, on an album of that magnitude at that moment, as a person that's pretty much an unknown in the game, said everything to me and he living up to that. He has more pockets than Joe, so I had to give him the edge on that. Um, as far as lyrical content, pretty much neck and um, but it's really more the flow patterns, cadences, and areas that Cole can get into that I haven't heard from Joe. Yet. Right. So uh, lyrically, I gave it to Cole. Um, marketability wise, I didn't separate. I didn't separate them from each other as far as like your marketability outside. Because like with two chains, I can sit like in uh, TV shows and shit like that. How much how expensive shit is like. I look at the podcast and shit as a flip off of what Joe Budden did. Like, cause even when he was rapping, like, cause I look at the totality of his career, not just now, but like Pump It Up mm -hmm. days, shit was everywhere. The nigga song is on fucking jock jams, which means every arena in the country plays that shit at some point to get the crowd hype. So people that don't even, might not even realize they love Joe Budden, be it the crowd, huh, 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 on the dance cam. Um, the he basically, 
he was the one of the first big YouTubers. Like a lot of the reason that we watch celebrities and that type of shit now and the way we do is because of the shit he was doing on YouTube back when he was still dropping mood to hear his shit. So like, I feel like I give, if I'm gonna give 2 chains credit for a lot of this shit, I gave him credit for what Marketer was saying with Joe Budden. So I would say Marketer, um, we go to- mm -hmm. I thought about this, right? And the image I could not get out of my head was Joe Budden versus Hollow the Don. And this nigga said a punchline and like punching the air like this, like, yeah, and doing this little kick. And it was so like, you don't look like somebody. Uncle up there, if you don't, that is not it, bro. That, that, so like, I think it's just hard for me to see anything else. And I see J. Cole rocking crowds having for crying. So like, and his freestyles be fucking. So, uh, the stage present. And uh, this is our first 5 0 of the day. Pod Squad was with. I don't, I don't think that's the only time he got like a 5 0 too. So, yeah. It, 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 it's kind of showing who's going to actually... Jay, well, you got to think. J. Cole, first round, he's been... Uh -huh. That won't be no cut and dry. He's kind of a legend. That was a, that was a tough call. Next week, which leaves us in this quarterfinal round or pushes five now. You want to go next, fella? Ross. What the Ross. Oh, Rick Ross, the host. Um, we go going Ross. Kendrick Lamar versus Rick Ross. I'll go first here. <laughs> Lyricism, it was Kendrick. Kendrick, one of them top-tier lyricists. It's he on he on that island of them them goats. The way he puts shit together, the thought process, lanes he uses, flow switches, wide variety of get on and content wise and flow wise makes sense. On um, it's just ridiculous. so I gave him uh, he's just a, more of a wordsman. I definitely as far as vibe on a track, I like Ross a little better. To ride out there, but as far as just like technical skill with lyrics and how you put it together and how you use words to paint a picture. Kendrick, Kendrick lyrics. Stage presence is tough. Stage presence. It was close because I've seen both of these show fucking down. Um, but the stage is Kendrick rocks. Kendrick rocks mm -hmm. them Kanye, Drake, uh, Jay Z type crowd at this level of career. So it's just a different level. When you're master stadiums, you wanted them. So uh, I gave stage presence. And as far as um marketability, I actually gave this to Rick Ross. When I'm thinking marketability, um. I feel like as far as Kendrick will get it as far as record sales, concert sales, I'm not 100% sure because I feel like Ross tours more than Kendrick. Like Kendrick might make a real big bag on like the one he does, but he might not tour again two, three years. Whereas Ross, I feel like he's almost always on a tour. I feel like every time I look, his name is on the flyer. He has to hear a name on the radio. And so like, I feel like he does more of it. So I wasn't really sure where he stood on that. But I feel like as far as with the liquor amount that he does from outside sources and the fact that when I think of somebody, a kid in Japan, I feel like if I showed them a picture of both and was like, who is this? They're going to say Rick Ross and kind of Rick Ross, Rick Ross. They're going to know him just because of the image being so big more before they would think of, oh, that's Kendrick Lamar. So I gave marketability actually to Rick Ross. So I had it. Who won? Either one of y'all uh, want to go? I'll go. Let's see. I do. Cause this is one you really have to pick. Cause like you said, Kendrick has, he can get different kinds of crowd and I like them both or whatever, but all right. Lyricism. I definitely went with Kendrick and stage presence. You're right. Rick Ross tours more. Kendrick only tours every once in a while. But I feel like that's only because Kendrick only Kendrick don't have to tour all the time. This is, Kendrick has you know, a bigger tour and Ross has more frequent. Like I don't feel like I feel like the bag that he would get from the tours that he would get or the the um opportunities or whatever for festivals and stuff that he would get kind of outweighs the little small tours or whatever. Plus he's one of those obscure artist that he only comes back for the music pretty much like he's really for the music so i kind of gave him i kind of gave rick ross the marketing uh, mm -hmm. on that side because outside of music you really don't know kendrick for that for anything else but he's so good at music that's the, probably the reason yeah, why I'm so um i'm still so I, and i'm gonna give i'm gonna give stage presence to kendrick just because of that or whatever i feel like ross he can rock his crowd. Rock it. Probably he can rock his crowds more, but Kendrick's crowds are so big that you can't just say, you know, you can't just. It takes more mastery to rock. Yeah. So I'm going to give it to Kendrick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Spacey. Uh, Starting by saying once again, Rick Ross is one of my favorite rappers. Both. Um, both. Um, boss, 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 the boss, 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 the boss, the boss, boss, boss. Hands down. Boss. Nothing else said. Listen to a Kendrick song, listen to a Ross song. Lyricism, hands down. You can take your very best Ross song. I don't care if you have a feature or not. You can take your very best Kendrick song, feature or not. Match them up. Lyricism, hands down. We'll go to Kendrick. Um, marketability. Uh, tough question for me right now. That was there. the one. Marketability. Ross's name is everywhere. Often, often, often. Ross, Ross, Ross. Um, but when Kendrick does choose us, choose to make an appearance, everyone wants to see him. You feel me? Hands it's, down everything. It's like the mystery of Kendrick. So it makes it tough. Both of them could go to some of the same areas, some of the same spots, some of the same pockets when it comes to that marketability. Um, but Ross has multiple lanes of relative, um, the wing spot in different cities. The yes, he does. Get, the ability to get your children with the business. That's one thing. So marketability, I'm going to go with Ross. Um, stays present. Ah, that's a tough one for me too because Ross can't rock a crowd. But Kendrick, Get that ability to make me feel the lyrics and take them to a different level. So I'm going to say Kendrick 2 1. Okay. 5 0. Oh, the pod squad agreed. Um, this was actually a tough round for me tonight, in fact. I definitely thought that was easy money. Then I went in and I started analyzing. I'm closer than I thought. So. Shout out to mm-hmm. Rose, but uh, pod squad and the pilots. In our last round of the quarterfinal, the last member of the final four, push it first. Royce, 5 9. Pat. Oh, man, that's funny. Y'all pick me first. <laughs> All right, we'll get right down to it. Um, I'm going to go to lyricism first because that's easy to go ahead and knock that out of the way. I, I, I gave Royce that just for the obvious reason. Um, Pusha T has lyrics and he has bars. Royce is, is one of those people that just have bars within bars and just the spark partner that he's been in league with is going to keep his, his sword sharp so to speak but all, um, of, all of his part yeah exactly so when you are constantly around that there's no way and i mean you know you're in a group with like joel ortiz and crooked eye the 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 mainstay of the label is eminem or whatever like nah it, it's no way around. now marketing i'll go back to market i'll go back. um no, nah, either way, it's kind of hard for either one. It's stage presence or whatever. I, I was going to give Pusha T a stage presence. Mind you, I know Royce can rock the crowd, and I've seen them, and I've seen them slaughterhouse videos or whatever where they do rock the crowd, but I feel like Pusha T can get a lot more venue and be in bigger venue right. just because of the, the people around them. And that's the same thing with marketability. I just feel like he, because Royce, you have his, 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 the past couple of years, he's been rising to fame. A lot more. Um, everybody respects his re- respects his pen. I mean, he's 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 done stuff with classic with classic producers like Premier, but I still feel like Pusha T does a lot more stuff around outside of rap. I mean, before we even get to the fact that he's he's the president of good music and right there beside Kanye, a lot mm-hmm. you know. He has this clothing line. He has the, like, he's on the low, has pushed the hip hop culture, like, on the low as far as, like, fashion and gear um, in, in general. And then he's been around Pharrell so much. He just doesn't, he's just got a lot more stats under his belt. I mean, he got jingles and stuff that he gets checks <laughs> from, from McDonald's and Arby's and stuff like that. So yes, he does. He's, He's done a lot of stuff outside of rap, and I'm not talking about the so-called inspiration to his rap, which is drug. He just does bills outside of rap that would have his name out, just way more prevalent than Royce. So uh, probably surprisingly so to a lot of people because Royce is one of my, I like Royce more than Pusha T. But I like to say before, if it was just lyricism, I would have probably picked Royce, but I picked Pusha T, 2-1. Okay, so we got one vote for the push. Um, Faith, you want in on this? Oh, yeah. So, marketability, push your team, hands down. Um, Royce don't get his face out there enough. Um, that's just it. Push your team, puts himself out there to be marketable. Um, he's based himself. He has the ability to be marketable coming from the clips, coming to his own, and plus right. the connection with Ferrell. And just building his own knowledge based on being around him, he knows how to be marketable. Um, so, that's just hands down. Stage performance. Uh, 
really don't know when it comes to that one. I say it's a toss up because I, I feel like both of them give the crowd about the same thing. They can move the crowd about the same way to me. Um, so I gave it the voice. The lyrics, sorry, pusher. I'm a bias oh. to the VA, but I gave it the voice. So oh, I gave shit. it the voice to one. Now that's surprising. I did not see this coming, folks. Royce 2 1. Upset. Um, from Faith. That's definitely not what I saw it coming. I thought that was a bet, but y'all definitely surprised me. All right. Ooh. Oh, man. Um, lyricism. It's funny, his push. I actually had that as a bit of a push at first. Um, and then I went back and listened to like one of those old bad and uh, good and what did they call them? The bad bad meat. The bad, bad meat evil. evil. Yeah. <clears throat> Roy's different. He one of them different lyricism. He definitely has a lot more go with his lyrics. Um, and I feel like Push has almost pigeonholed himself into certain content that just doesn't make sense from him, whereas Royce can kind of go anywhere with it. Um, as far as different pockets, I definitely feel like Royce is more different cadences that I've heard him use. Push kind of has that same flow on every. Um, so yeah, Royce for lyricism. Oh, no, Royce for lyricism. Um, for marketability, that was easy to T. Um, Royce not Royce got the, the Eminem bag. But Push is the president of a label that also has Kanye as the man, as the owner of that. Um, his last album was great. He knows how to really get out there and put his face in the right spots. And the fact, like you said, he flipped that music into using his music to take him into industries where, like, a lot of people wouldn't expect a hip-hop artist to be like, doing Arby's, Jingles, McDonald's. So uh, marketability, I gave it to him. Um, as far as stage presence, I gave that to Push, man. Royce the five nine dry to me. He can rap his ass off, but he's not very. He don't have a lot of presence. Like even his great freestyles, where the lyrics are great, it don't be presented well. To me. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like Royce the five nine is a perfect example of a rapper that I prefer to read his lyrics, to really hear him. So for that reason, um, mm-hmm. push two one. And the pod squad agree with us four one. Push a T. We got a B A representative in the building. Yeah, Our so final good. four is. Kendrick Lamar versus T. J. Cole <laughs> versus Two Chain. So um, mm-hmm. get out there and vote, Pod Squad, as we get our tops ready so we can crown our top MC of the 2000s. Um, shout out to everyone who's already been voting and uh, just your votes coming in, man. Also, if you listen to this on Anchor, let us know in the voice messages what your favorite MC of the 2000s is. If you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this on anything else, let us know down in the comments how you felt about it. What did you think of it? Um, who's your favorite MC? Did we get the list right to start with? Who we leave out? Let us know in the comments or with a voice. Um, and yeah, man, that's this week's episode, a segment of the top of the thousand. All, we're on that road, people. We're almost about to crown our champion. And that Looking pretty much. Obvious. Now, what I will say is we've been growing in votes. Some votes have been still kind of skim, and that's some fuckery. But that's okay, because it's the perfect time to talk about it. It's time. Oh, it's time. Did y'all check y'all clock? For the good. I Man, it's way phone. past time. It's we time. started late. It's so time. It's way past time. Time is time. It's time. It's time. For the good and fuckery. Good and Y'all thought I was froze, right? Uh, (laughs) I thought it was the internet, right? So, episode 46, good and fuckery. Let's get the good out the way. Not to say I don't like a lot of good. Lord knows I need need it for the past day that I've had so far. But let's start off with good here. Um, Yes. We would just talk about the hip hop uh, hop, uh, MCs, whatnot. So guess who won lyricist of the year at the BT Hip Hop Award? Who would that be, Pat? J. Cole. Well deserved. Yeah, it's it's a good it's a reason why he's at where he's at on our um on our stats here, on our uh, little tournament we got Let's going go, on. Cole. No. Let's go, Cole. He's well, proving us reason. right. And I like it when people prove me right. I'm not mad at <laughs> I'm not mad at all. Yeah, matter of fact, let's get right into it or whatever because the bt hip-hop awards was uh that did i don't happen, even know didn't. when it it did happen it and did i didn't happen. watch so, it. let's see the, i i found I out know. it happened i didn't either because like, i don't watch verses watch. that come in the middle of the night i found out it happened i was like oh that thing went down what was that yeah like, they had a cypher and everything where was that award shows me let me tell you something Award shows, the only reason why award shows are exciting is because of the memes afterward. 
And that's with a lot of shows. Like the war show, there's like really no point. All of it is is just a a promotional uh advertisement segment for labels, pretty much. But we'll get into that later on. But these are the awards that um they've gotten out here. So uh Nelly won the I am hip hop icon. I find that ironic because of all the stuff him and KRS one was going through in the past, but yeah, he got the I am number one. <laughs> but um <laughs> ironic. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, it's one of those things where I feel like pretty sure when it comes to like hip hop, it might have been a couple of other people that has not been brought up that might have pioneered this. That might have could, you know, the, I don't I don't leave. Because I'm not damn, gonna doubt number one. achieved here. And he is happens to be the number one hip hop icon. I am hip hop icon. So Andale, 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 mommy, e i e i o o. Man, man, my uh, my first year at ODU, my roommate, it was a white roommate. He played Nelly like it was Wu Tang Clan. I swear, to God. <laughs> like he played that country grammar album like day and day. The album was kind of I, I, it was, but especially I just for wasn't that at, particular time, like it was all right. Yeah, but I at that time we know Mr. I wasn't Moon that Lapp, we know we know yeah I wasn't that progressive know. at that time. You should have been I born in nineteen ninety four in the middle of the Bronx somewhere. <laughs> you missed your you missed your era. Like nigga, that shit is done, nigga. Niggas is singing. Okay? Get used to this shit. This shit ain't going back in the box. Uh, the I, personally, I don't I'm sorry. Personally, I don't like niggas serenading to me all the damn time okay that's that was what rap was for the, the shoot like you got you got how many forms of music that singing is involved in and then you want to come up with the one music that i could actually attach all right i'm gonna leave it alone we're gonna go back to the hip-hop awards or whatever um one thing all these days all the these genres says, of music music nigga. Fuck, no it's been a how about it how about is that man? I'm not even gonna say that. I'm not because I'm about to do it. Good job, but man. I'm not. I'm not. It's probably smart man mean. on this show. Whatever you was about to, see, you probably. Said. I'm probably sitting here. But anyway, um, I don't know who Little Sims is, but they got the International Flow Award, so I'm pretty sure they're like Ooh. an international artist. Little Sims. It's a girl. It's a lady. Little Sims. Little Sims, and they spelled and she spelled out the whole word little. Like the video game, The Sim? Yeah, mm. but she's an international artist, so I'm not going to think, you know, say if she was in America, I would say, yeah. First of all, if she was in America, she probably would have she do Afro L-I-L. Music? That's what I'm thinking. So like Afro No, nah, she's a British. She's a British rapper. Um, Her name, her, her stage name is short for a real name. Her name is Symbiatu or Symbi for short. Lil Sims. Yep. We can call him Sims. Lil Sims. So, yeah, that's good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so British rapper. Um, Jay-Z got best feature verse on what it feels like. That's that song with Nipsey. Okay. Uh, well deserved. Uh I don't DJ of the Year, DJ Skin. I don't know who that is. Song and hip hop video of the year is WAP. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What what it feels like is the impact track of the year. Which is that Jay Z Nipsey song? Mm-hmm. Uh, new hip hop artist of the year, Young Blue. I don't know. Album of the year. If I call me if... oh him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They said time heals. Don't go be in no life without me. Your mind be it. And I don't wanna go and let you be. I wish that we could trade places. Don't want no boo faces. She got my heart be racing. Yeah, y'all gonna deal with this it's off, this like off key singing out here, again. All right. So, uh, what's his face it? eats the mic. Uh, album album of the year is Tyler the Creator. Uh, yeah. Call me if you get lost. <laughs> I don't know. Yo, he's, he sounds like he's squeezing the microphone. The mic. He is eating that shit. I heard it you. <laughs> oh, like my God. Oh, shit, you were only here on the partners podcast. One of the oh. hosts eating the mic. <laughs> well, um, well, actually, you know what? Tyler got three award, uh, three awards on the um hip hop awards. He got like uh album of the year, live performer of the year, 
And that that performance I saw on the Grammys, I, I give it to him. Where he was like uh walking in the wind or something like that out the Rolls Royce. Mm-hmm. That was a good one. Um, and he got cultural influence. And I'll give it to him on that. I I, I can give it to him on that. Cause he on the low, he's done a lot of like cultural stuff on the low. I mean, matter of, matter of fact, um he low key a translator. Yeah, I can see the logic. and all that stuff. Um Let's see. Your, your favorite female rapper, Saweetie, got Hustler of the Year. I, I always feel like Hustler of the Year is like one of those. You can move on. Yeah, right. I think her meal is still at McDonald's, y'all. All right. Protect um, black women, so I ain't gonna say what I think. Hip hop platform of the year is Genius, which is convenient. I, I think that's well deserved because if whenever I need to find a lyric, Genius is there. Nothing else. No, no, not for it. Um, producer of the Year is Hit Boy. I give him that. Artist of the year is Little Baby. Duo and group is Little Baby and Little Dirt because they got a they had a joint okay. album together. Um, Hip hop award for best collaboration. Once again, it's WAP WAP. And first of all, let's give it up for Virginia. All right, now that I said that, video director of the year is Missy L. Let's go, Missy. I ain't even know people yeah. still watch video. Yeah, the last YouTube, time you watch the music video, YouTube and um Tyler. That the Jeez. when that that family ties baby baby king song came out because that's the first time I heard about that um Kendrick verse. Ah, but ah, um that was ah, about ah. a month ago. That's about a month ago. I probably watched one video a month every two months, every three months, or whatever. Um so yeah, that was the BET Hip Hop Awards, y'all. Um more black excellence. Um uh, Bubba Wallace becomes the first black driver to win top NASCAR race since 1963. Wow. Yeah. 1960. Well, there's one of the stories I was gonna cover later. So we got four <laughs> stories for positive black news, y'all. But that is some good. No, but that's some good because mm-hmm. NASCAR is They're one definitely. of the most racist sports ever. Period. Yeah. So the fact that a black man out here winning a, a major race finally, like that's you can get some old yeah. black racers inspired like that and get some old kids that uh look and be like, Oh, I can do that. I'd like to do that now. Yeah, that's um yeah, that's one of those ones. I'm not expecting the Negro um national. What is it? The the Negro National ne- Anthem? Yeah, Negro National Anthem. I just couldn't get the word anthem out. Um, I don't expect that to be at NASCAR. No, no I doubt it. I don't expect All the right, Confederate flags to, to go nowhere. I don't either. <laughs> don't either. Um, well, okay. The next versus that comes up is KRS one versus Big Daddy Kane. Just to let y'all know. What? Yep. That's that's the next one. That is the next one. And I uh, know who I'm gonna be going for, but that is a tough one. I mean, Kara's one gave me the mic one time, so I'm I'm kind of biased. So I yeah. can't say no, that's your buddy. Yeah, he was cool. <laughs> anyway, he tucked anyway, you up in his nostril and everything. <laughs> I, I mean he dapped me up, man. He dapped me up. So <laughs> I'm gonna leave it alone. I did that just to get face to laugh. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Can you man, imagine that's... him though? Like everybody he know that he friends, but he'd be like, "Come here, man, break it in, break it in." I mean, be... and he just he just tucked you up in his nostrils. <laughs> I got you. You need a ride. <laughs> oh, I ain't I ain't gonna joke that bad man. That man gave me the bike and then dapped me up after. So I must have did a good job. So I'm a little that big as hell. That and is gotta, true. And that's from a big nose nigga. That is. I said I, I I know yeah. one of my I know one of my people. Yeah, that is a massive nose. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did there? I know. Let's get to the you knows. <laughs> Let's get to the fuckery. Let's get Fuck right it. to the fuckery. Let's get to it. first slight fuckery. Y'all seen about the Super Mario Brothers uh, movie that's coming out? It's an anime. Then they so already do that and it didn't work well. But it's not live action. And they have some live ass goombas doing this yeah. on the damn elevator. Yeah, <laughs> but guess what? Yeah, it's it's a whole it's a whole bunch of like just <laughs> niggas uh, had those big ass actors, uh the big ass uh old school. Big you remember coats? You remember when you was growing up and there would be like a kid that might have like a foot that's shorter than the other. They had those big boots with this braces on the no, side. Oh yeah, the, the, the Mario that first Mario Brothers movie had them. They couldn't. They ain't actually super jump from the mushroom and nothing. They just had these little hydraulic shoes on. Oh, yeah. I was like, man, y'all get this shit out of here. Had a fat old guy and John Leguizamo. <laughs> but the shit that killed me was the in the in the in the cartoon or the in the video game. The Goombas was these little shits that jumped on. Yeah. Then in the movie, you give me this big seven foot six, 335 pound linebacker looking nigga with a trench coat on so long, with a little head. 
Oh, little head, big body oh. ass. What the fuck out of here? That ain't no Goomba. Are y'all ready for the cast of the Super Mario? All right. So let's start it off. Star Lord is voicing Mario. Oh, so like this is not a real right. movie. You said it's a no. Cartoon. It's a cartoon. Oh, it's a cartoon. Okay, well this can be pulled off. This gonna be what pulled off. Chris Pratt like is Chris playing Pratt. Mario. He all right. Mm-hmm. Luigi is Charlie Day. Um, Keegan Michael Key from Keegan yeah, Hill. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. is Toad. He's Toad. Yep. He is Toad. I ain't think Toad's um, voice was that deep. All right. You know, uh, voice actors, they can inflect, you know, but give a little voice like this or some junk like that. Okay. They're going to have so, to because I'm, I'm imagining Toad as a character with his voice. It's not registered for me. I think it would be funny, though. <laughs> It's gonna be something. Like what if what if they they got toad come out the back? Hey guys, fuck us up. That joke. Y'all got them mush. Y'all got them mushrooms and star. I got them fire flower for me. All in this chest in this treasure. Come meet me down this pipe real quick. Pop pause the game. Pause the game. (laughs) Guess who's Donkey Kong? Yes, Donkey Kong is in this movie, and guess who he is? He is not. Uh It's Seth Rogen. Pineapple Express himself. I can see that because while he wasn't he Wreck It Ralph. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so yeah. I can see that. He's also it's, it's the up. same type of big loafy character, so I can see that. Mm-hmm. So, that Another makes- one of our great, um, great voice, black voice actors, Kevin Michael Richardson. He's also in it, but he's playing an unknown character called Kamek. I think that's like the uh, Wizard Cooper. But guess who plays? Guess who's playing King Cooper? Nigga, I need to, I'm still guessing who the fuck who the nigga you just said, Kevin Michael Cooper. What's this? He's, in the nerd in the nerd world, in the nerd world, Kevin Michael, I just like to give up to give it up for like the black actors and black voice actors that's out there that people might not know about. Um Kevin Michael Richardson, he played um he's played John Stewart in the Justice League game, uh Justice League cartoon. Like he's probably played almost every deep voice black character that's in cartoon period Never. but yeah look him up y'all it's kevin michael Richardson. you said that nigga name casual as hell like we done seen this nigga on the rig i don't know this nigga yeah, yeah. y'all might not know but you look him up man you'll see <laughs> you'll see all the stuff that matter of fact i'm about this right i'm just gonna tell him now Ooh, y'all man that oh fuck yeah i don't know if i'm crying for real or if i'm laugh crying but i'm oh shit <laughs> oh, his role let's see he's done a man's time we'll go back into this i'm gonna make that a whole segment he's like a um man he's like uh lamar burton like those type of like uh voice actors pretty much but yeah guess who's playing cooper king cooper jack black Jack Black is playing King Cooper. I would have rather think... Robert De Niro for some reason. I don't know why, but in my head, I can see Cooper. <laughs> I kind of want Danny DeVito to play Toad, but because I think that would be hilarious. Or Joe Pesci. I actually want Danny DeVito to play Mario. Now that would be good. But yeah. I mean, oh man. I don't fucking. Oh man. Okay. So um, Kevin. Monday it was a Facebook Kevin. out. Kevin Thomas <laughs> Lee, Leroy. <laughs> I mean, I'm proud of big up black folks, man. Niggas always but, gotta have yeah. three names and shit, man. I don't need to know your middle name. Oh, he ain't intimate like that. You know how you you know how uh, um like common Kevin Richardson probably is though. I don't be out here talking about Tiz V partner. Partners. <laughs> I still be saying V Pat one with all this kind of. Well, you got two middle names. See, it ain't three though. It's them three name Nick. Gotta watch them. Winston, Winston, Jeffrey yeah. Howell, Thurston, Thurston, Langston, Thomas. Oh yeah, that's too much. That's too much. All right. Um, Randy Watson Johnson. Randy Watson. <laughs> All right, I'm going off the rails. I'm sorry. You know when it get late night, man. If it's past eleven, I, and it is, so I'm yeah. It's it's going off the rails, folks. It's going off the rails. So I'm gonna I'm gonna close up. So Facebook got an outage on Monday. Y'all were freaking out while I was at work. Because th- that was like one of my first calls, um, which included Instagram and everything. But I just want people to know, man, this happens every year. Y'all just don't notice. There's an outage every year. They do it. But they said there's a uh, there's a uh, documentary out talking about what actually the, the fuckery that Facebook does to get ad dollars. You know, pushing out things that they know that people will get angry or about or whatever to keep them hooked and keep them on Facebook so they can keep looking on it. That's why all of a sudden they had news. But 
they say because that was the Sunday before the outage, all of a sudden there was an outage the next day. But everybody likes conspiracy theories, so I'll leave it at that, pretty much. Uh, Boosie Badass got kicked off the uh, Legends of the Street. He said it was a setup. Uh, they say it was a setup. He said um, it was a setup. Of course, he's going to say it's a setup. What I heard was he um, was trying to go up there at somebody else's time or whatever. And he thought it was his time. He went up there anyway. They tried to pull him off. That started a fight. And then when you have a tour with all those gang niggas that's up there. Oh, some gangsta shit can go down. Yeah. You, and you got ad dollars and promoter dollars into it. Any slight, and you know, companies going into it, worried about safety, especially in the COVID area or whatever. Any slight incident is going to get you kicked off. That's real. So I just leave it at that. Now. The biggest fuckery of the evening. Biggest fuckery. The biggest fuckery of the evening. Let me just pre uh, start this off with, um, so I saw that Mike Tyson and Freddie Gibb uh, had an interview. And it was Mike Tyson. <laughs> if y'all don't know, Mike Tyson has his podcast. I like <laughs> Mike Tyson. <clears throat> and first, Freddie Gibbs is hilarious or whatever. You know, like if, if, if he was out, if he had his step, first of all, like. Uh, Didn't he tell he, on he, himself? He's still free. Yeah, he told him himself and didn't give a fuck about it. <laughs> I thought they would have. I thought like, they would have got him for when he was out here killing ground. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, and you want to know what the funny? They thing let about people it? get away with anything these days, boy. I tell you, just kill a crackhead mm -hmm. and admit to it on a podcast and the biggest and podcast in the, in the world. He did it again. He did it on Instagram and he did it again on on Mike Tyson. He right, talked about the crackhead again. Yo, if y'all watch, it's probably need to tell him stop telling that story. Watch Freddie Gibbs. Yo, that whole that whole interview was hilarious, man. That joint was hilarious. They were just talking about trippy stuff. So what got into the... Let me get right into the fuck report. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, what mm -hmm. else? Freddie Gibbs, hell on the is, Freddie Gibbs is one of the most hilarious rappers or whatever. But Mike Tyson and uh, Freddie were talking about how crazy it was back in the day. And then he was talking about what particular type of white girls that was out there. Then Freddie said, man, you know, Dr. Umar going to get us for talking about the mm -hmm. white girl. <laughs> whatever. And Mike Tyson is like, who the hell is, who is Dr. Umar? <laughs> I don't know who, who he is. He's somebody... Oh, well, what is he? You know, who is who is he to so, say that? Whatever. Yo, Tyson, but, Tyson was heated about this. What that? Yeah, like he was like, well, you know, God, who, who, what, what's wrong with him? What's this thing? It was like, it was like, well, you know, he's for you know black people. He got some good ideas, stuff like that, or whatever. He got this thing with school. I think he even said something about the school, but I don't know nothing about that. But I really th be thinking that shit is funny myself, and that's why I watch him. That's that's what Freddie said. The funny but, part be, who my <laughs> they talking about celebrity. But every time a celebrity is asked about him, they never know who the fuck he is. <laughs> but maybe like and then, and then and then Mike Mike basically says somebody with hate in their heart can't do it. Basically can't do any good, pretty much. Because he said if he has that much hate for white folk or whatever, um, then yeah, then why is he doing a school, basically? Or what is he, you know, pretty much I agree with that. But um then Umar found out about it. And you know, Umar can't he can't just let shit slide. He can't just let shit slide. I ain't really seen shit, shit since that nigga was doing the electric slide for the FDMG uh, block party. He going to be like Boohoo Banger and going to say, I need y'all to slide. I need y'all to slide. Because you know what he did? You know what he did? He goes up there. First of all, he talking about, uh, well, I, 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 he was actually kind of respectful or whatever. But he said, hey, y'all doing some heavy coonery about my name. Or whatever, and he challenged Mike Tyson to a box to five rounds. He said he could probably stay up five rounds. He said he wants to get. But Hold on, what? He he challenged. I knew about Mike the boxing match. I mm -hmm. saw little clips, but I didn't see that he was talking about he can stay up for five. Man, no yeah. wobbly ass legs. He can barely stay up with no round. It gets worse, man. It gets worse. It was worse. walking up the aisle with them two wives, with them holding his ass up because his ass was struggling. When you watch him, man, you can see his delusion. See that old ass Fred Sanford Waddle. Well, is that what it called? Delusion of grandeur, or is that delusion of grandeur? Yeah. Um. He he says this like he can actually. I don't look. I don't know the rate of his celebrity. Maybe he know more. I'm pretty sure he know more people. But he just straight up said, "If I can't get Philly's own Bernard Hopkins." I say Floyd Mayweather to train me for five rounds. 
And I think to myself, fuck are you to convince Floyd Money Mayweather? <laughs> like, like he like I would say Floyd Mayweather is somebody like, that's sitting there like who the fuck is he? But he don't even know Umar to say who the fuck is he. Like your name ain't going across your desk in the morning. Floyd ain't there. He's probably never he heard says, of you. Umar he forget. Says, he big in the conscious circle. He not big worldwide where everybody know him like that. Delusion. Delusion of grandeur. Man, he said he has a height advantage. I say to you, Umar Lennox Lewis. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Mike Tyson to knock niggas Man, out of like 6'5", six, 6'. Six. Yeah, he's pretty, yeah. He yeah. didn't drop some big niggas. A majority, I've seen a majority them, of times people hit taller different. than him. Even right now, especially if you ain't no boxer, like you ain't conditioned to getting hit like that. Like people forget boxers go through sparring and shit to condition their muscles and their body to getting hit. You ain't going to go in there against a professional boxer that's been doing this since he was a child, a world champion, one, thought of as one of the greatest and strongest knockout artists of all time, and think you're going to last no five rounds with him, Umar, with them fake-ass FDMG gloves. He's going to beat the shit out of you. Yeah, you're going to need the dick. Some of some who wants some of Big Papa, he's going to take all of Big Papa and knock his ass into knock his ass back to Philly. You're going to need more than a Bottola shake to fuck with Mike Tyson. That's a good decision. You need to get you. Leave Tyson alone. Omar, you, you need to get a weed boy. Ain't said, Tyson ain't said it. He ain't Sarnetta. He ain't none of them little dudes you be debating against. Tyson will beat the shit out of you and then kiss mm -hmm. you on the top of your head. Mm-hmm. And laugh with the little high-pitched laugh. You don't fuck with people. Leave Tyson alone. So he not only in your school, he might end your life. Because again, get I saw how you was walking at that uh, block party, champ. Ooh, huh? <clears throat> this is all bullshit aside, all jokes aside. Something is going on with your health, physical, as far as like your joints or something. I don't know whether it's a like a bursitis, arthritis type thing. I don't know whether it's like an injury that ain't up. healed right, but <laughs> I saw the way he was walking. That gait is up. not is not a healthy gait. Something is going on. Get help. Stop being out here challenging people that will beat the fucking dog shit out you. And uh, where the HVAC? Get when the school over. Get a Ouija board and um, count, conjure up the soul of Kimbo Slice. Since you're going to need it. <laughs> See, that's what you need. You ain't that's selling enough hot dogs and hamburgers out there at the uh, block party. Uh, we ain't got no HVAC yet. Uh -uh. You got enough for a wedding to two women. That's <laughs> fake as hell. But you ain't got enough yet to actually put some on the, uh, keeping that flood out the floor. Oh, the water was back, y'all. Lake shit forgot we to back, say. We back, y'all. We back. Oh, yeah. He said the news, the nosebleed tickets will start off at 250. Um, he wants Swiss Beats to promote. He's going to come out in a Joe Frazier t-shirt, or he might come out in a Muhammad Ali t-shirt. It don't matter what t-shirt he has. In the, in the night, he's going to probably be using that t-shirt to wipe up blood. Um, but he says he, 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 he openly admits that he can't beat him, and he's not going to disrespect his legacy. But he can survive five rounds and get some shots. If he had said that, survive maybe <clears throat> one round, I'd have given him a But you ain't coming in there. I don't care if you train for six months. Coming in there, never been done there against a pro, taking Mike Tyson shots because he going to probably just do a body shot. You ain't taking them. You ain't going to be fast enough to dodge shit. You're going to be a sitting duck. And Mike Tyson don't do exhibition. Everything he do in that ring is, I'm trying to knock yeah. you the fuck out. Everything he do. Roy Jones was skilled enough to know how to get away from that. You ain't Roy Jones, Uma. Stop Everything this dumb shit. Man. Every time a, I look, he's doing some dumb shit. It's a uh is a minor trauma, I feel like. He's Same. stupid, man. He's a fucking dummy. Yo. Like even if Mike Tyson pulled back on his punches, it's still gonna hurt. It's Mike Tyson knock will you knock your ass straight through that mustard yellow wall at your school. <clears throat> Unless you're going in there with that softball helmet that you thought was a football helmet with your dumb ass Umar. Don't, don't leave my type. Come on. Yeah, Next story. Right. You don't fight Tyson. Oh, that was it. That was the top of the fuckery. Yeah, you don't fuck with Mike you can't get no more higher and fucker than that. Man, Umar always <laughs> leave me with a bad taste in my mouth. Bro. No, it's some bullshit. But I tell you what ain't no bullshit. And that's the positive black news. And I got some stories for y'all. Uh, had already covered one of them. I was going to cover with Bubba Watson. But, uh, Bubba, yeah. But uh, I do got some other stories. And the positive black news. The cool shit that black people are doing, experiencing, receiving, and creating out here in the world this week. So our first story comes to us from NBC.com. MacArthur names 11 black genius grant winners. 
There's never been a moment in history where Black excellence did not prevail, said artist Jordan Castile, one of 11 Black people among this year's 25 recipients. Ibram X. Kendi has dedicated much of his life to fighting racism and office thinking that left him constant attack. It means his work, though, has received affirmation the way he never paid and was honored as a MacArthur Fellow. Grant was also known as, um, and Kendall Kendi, who's 39, he was among 11 Black people out of the 25 people in this year's, and it was among the highest number of groups after 2020, 12 Blacks uh, who won, according to the MacArthur Foundation. So that means that there are many more Black people who are doing excellent work, who are actually being recognized and supported now. And one of the oldest anti-racist Black ideas is the notion that Black people are intellectually inferior. So this class, you in the racist tradition of spelling that racist myth, extremely, incredibly important, director at Boston. So... Our people are out here getting noticed, taking, kicking ass, taking names, and winning money. So shout out to those uh, 11 Black Jeans Grant winners from this year, the 12 from last year, and maybe they continue to shine bright and show Black excellence. Indeed, man. I love it when we crush it in some other than the shit that they normally think of about, like, sports or something like that. Something like that. Well, nope, we're actually just like that. We <laughs> built um, civilization for peak's sake. <clears throat> Um, our next story is coming to us from news1.com in New York City. New York City is announcing plans for edu reform. Black history is taught in America. They are introducing new curriculum um, that basically aim that teach students the role of race and power relationships and the impact of systemic and national race. Um, as conservatives across the right wing America view their white fragility war on race theory, a thing they use as an umbrella to be black because they don't know what the, what the decade old academic study actually is. New York City is taking the opposite and introducing a new curriculum aimed at teaching the role of race and power relations and impact. According to the New York Post, City Schools Chancellor Misha Ross Porter, new Black studies since they at the Schomburgs in Black culture in Man. If we're serious about addressing what our students learn every day, legends, nonprofit organizations, and not just Black children, but all children, our children have to sell every single day and they have to see their value and worth between so many other messages that say different. So salute to this queen, salute to New York for pushing for um, creative ways to get around this pushback from creative, from critical race theory and still being able to teach the truth about what racism is. Um, it's important that we continue to have these racial dynamics conversations because that's the only way we actually grow and understand each other and get better. So shout out to you. And our next comes to us from abcnews.go. And this is California's back, y'all. They doing more cool shit for black folks. Calif they are killing it again. California knows how to take care of California <laughs> signs. The mom that bus support black moms and pay for doulas and extend ABC. Black women face higher rates of pregnancy. So California Governor Gavin Newsom signed the Momnibus law on Monday to address racial, maternal, and in health, a victory especially of color. The law will create a fund to grow and diversify the mid riflery workforce, extend California's Medicaid coverage for doulas who are trained professional mothers through pregnancy, and it extends Medicaid eligibility for postpartum to 2 to 12 months. Shout out to California Governor. Shout out to California for yet again finding itself on the positive black news for doing just shout out to the mothers that's going to help um and shout out to the doulas and midwives who are now going to um be able to actually increase their earning potential because now they're going through insurance um so shout out to whole act shout out to california and shout out to the black people and our last as the sports fanatic of this group the partner that most loves gave me great great pride 39 year old becomes the first black head football coach university of southern california that's from black Dante Williams, who's only 39, has made history as the first black head coach at the University of Southern California in over 140. I feel like this is the opportunity I was born, said in the ball, and the first black to be the first African American is a lot to me. I mean, it's a lot of people that come before me and that have paved the way for this opportunity. For more than 12 years, working a coach for other college football programs, Oregon, Arizona. So William started at a only 27 and in 12 years. Most head coaches are well into their 50s when they get their first job. I'm at least late 40s. So young, that definitely shows the dedication and hard work. Salute to him, and I hope he's a job for you. Shout out, USC Move, and shout out to Dante Ernie. Salute to coach. And I'm not a Trojans fan, but in honor of you on today, I'll say go Trojans. And that is the positive black news. You can hope it inspired, hope it gave you. Hopefully, it um, made you think. And another positive black, I thought it was getting starts. So we're going to talk about it. Really. Dave Chappelle 
was a genius. What did you guys think of it? Um, yeah, let's just start there. What is your what are just your overall thoughts? Like, what do you that shit was funny, nigga? I liked it. <laughs> Man. Man, I he like started it. off. This is the funny thing about Chappelle. He can make whack jokes sound funny. Like, cause when he he threw me off when he was like, I'm gonna make me a, a movie called Space Juice. See, I got it. <laughs> so like I got it, but I was like, dog, you knew where this nobody joke else would have pulled that off though. Yeah, no one else would have pulled that off. He threw that out there. He knew it was a bad joke. He just threw it out there because he's Chappelle. I can do it. I won't. That's when you know you're a master of your craft when you start doing tricks and you start mm-hmm. just, you know, oh, fuck it. Do what I want to do up here. That's an <laughs> MC. If mm-hmm. Chappelle was a rapper, he would be a master MC. I, I think oh, yeah. Chappelle, he definitely knows about MC. And so, bro, he's the only stand <clears throat> I've seen personally that can stand in one spot. Like, he don't walk back and forth. He's in one spot, foot up on the speaker. Smoking one cigarette, maybe. And will have you riveted. Like, I was literally like, the whole show. Mm-hmm. Now, one time that I, like, look away, like, it was a point, like, me and the wife was watching. And usually, like, we'll watch comedy specials and we'd be, you know, it'll make you laugh. And then you talk about maybe the joke. or you. We was just both just quiet, mm-hmm. laughing. But you didn't want to miss the next piece because yeah. you didn't know how. <laughs> with Chappelle, he's unique in taking a piece of one joke. And tying it into something like seven jokes later, and you don't even, like, you even oh, get it. Shit. So you got to stick with him. Yeah. So, he's an MC when it comes to this comedian and stuff. Like, he's really an MC when it comes to this comedian and stuff. I mean, he can, like, it's just like you say, like, you know how you listen to a rhyme or whatever, and you've listened to it a million times before, and this 15th time you listen to it, you catch something else that you ain't catch before. And it made mm-hmm. something else make sense. That's Chappelle right there. Like, you're just not going to expect what's coming up. And here's the question. Is Chappelle cancel proof? Yeah. That's that's the question. Because last night, <clears throat> or oh, when I watched it, he pissed off the LGBTQ community, which is one of the largest communities that will, they may have their inner bickering like all group, but they will ride for each other. Like, they don't play when they feel it. And the fact that he ain't got canceled yet, and this is his second straight special where he's directly targeting the hypocrisies, the fallacies, and their logic. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised he wasn't. So, yes, I think he is counsel. And I think he's also proof of, well, we'll get into, I want to just get into the themes he presented, but let's just start there with, he's, he's so genius in the way he talks about the shit that everybody want to say, but he says it in a way that still really, when you get to the meat and potatoes, what he's saying is, I'm offending. He's literally just saying like, so y'all do that? How do you, like, why? Mm-hmm. What the hell? Have y'all ever thought about how crazy some of this stuff is? And he never focuses on their actual sexuality. Yeah. He focuses on the Responses. behaviors and actions that they display yeah. in public. The non-accountability. There you go. And I think that's the genius part because you can have any dialogue as long as you're not attacking person. You're attacking the structure. So like you can attack my ideas like the 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 things that i spot out the 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 things that i stand on but you can't attack and like them people's sexuality they feel like that's them and the fact that he doesn't attack like i haven't heard him say anything that would make me think that he hates i do think that he thinks that they're funny and that's okay because you're a comedian you're supposed to think people funny he thinks black people funny he thinks white people funny he thinks asians he thinks handicapped people funny he thinks uh everybody funny and I love how he, I think when you're equal opportunist, I think even that you can, as long as you treat every, to everybody the same, you don't like show favorites, I think you can get away with finding the humor and everything. I also think he wins because he can say that yeah. same shit. And if the joke won't funny, he would get killed for real. No one yeah. would laugh. But I think I, I it's will so say, hilarious. It's like it's. Um, I will say with him, he's just like, it, it basically what he just said, man, you can, you can kill. This is crazy because he's defending the baby, but at the same time, he's not defending the baby. Like yeah. he's he's setting a, the baby up to be accountable for something or whatever. The funny and part it, about it, it is, is, though, that'd be the funny <clears throat> shit. The shock value shit or the name that he puts in there don't even be what the joke was about. That the yeah, baby that joke won't even about the baby. It was about the fact that black lives and a black black people being offended or black people being killed 
is less offensive to the world than him making a comment about the LGBTQ community. Exactly. He was saying, like, why is their movement more valuable than this one? Equal, okay, cool. But why does it have to? Well, how do you get to place yours above that? Why is it that society had mm -hmm. less outrage for somebody getting murdered than they did for the baby saying word? Because like, that's the type, that's what he was attacking <laughs> in the joke. So, like, the He's funny part people. is, dumb people need to stop commenting and getting outraged. Because you got to at least understand the joke to, if you're going to critique. And I, I rarely hear those people critique. They just, you know? they just proving him right. Because half the people, I was, I was saying all kinds of stuff like the LGB, I was seeing all kinds of think pieces and stuff like that. And when I read it, I was like, you did not look at this at all. You just heard what somebody else saw. You heard the sound bite you, or heard somebody else's talking point and went with I'm going to tell you what happened. Did y'all see? Those two white ladies, the two big round head white ladies right there in the middle. Yo, of the I thought I was off. okay. See, I knew it was no, something. no, you ain't the only one. They were there mad as heck, probably didn't crack a smile. <clears throat> they would have, um, yeah, they probably, um, were just spies and they couldn't wait and they ain't listen to nothing, not a dang thing. But you know what? You know what's the, the jokes on them because they paid tickets to see him. So they get told you about. It. That's right. And and you had to sit through it and eat that. And Dave Chappelle has the last laugh because nobody. Either way, they still can't cancel him because this is his last one. He went out with a bang. Well, cancel me so, then. I'm going to my <laughs> farm in Ohio and we're gonna cheat. Yeah, cancel. What do you I'm mean? With, I don't even want to be he here. Going, he going back to Ohio to hang with the dirty food white woman. Mm hmm. At strippies, man. When that nigga said that shit, the first thing I thought of was that video uh face. Me put too. On the, uh, yo, when that, when that girl foot was black, like me, me black on the oh, live show. Man. I yes, I, I, I laughed. Oh my god, I laughed so hard. But I'm gonna tell y'all the joke of the <laughs> night for me. Yeah, what was y'all joke of the night for me? It was Clifford the big giant. That was the sneak, the sneak one on mm. the low, man. It's just, I can't, I can't say it's a joke of the night, man, because that was it. That was it. Daphne. It hit, that hit different ways. That's the, that's the big thing about That this. was so smart. Because this, you didn't just laugh. You went through a whole gambit of emotions. He made you sad, mad, enraged. Made you like, think all of that. And at the end of the day, made you laugh about it. And I actually saw the tweet that Daphne actually wrote. They, they posted it up online. They actually showed the oh, wow. tweet that Daphne actually wrote. I'm going to I'm gonna see if I can find it. But it's exactly what he said. So that just backs up. And I, I like anytime they have these long think pieces about it, and I read some of them pretty much, it sounds like they did not, they did not listen to nothing at all. And it just proved him right the whole time. Like Pretty much. They, they're just, they're proving him the fuck right. They're not even listening to nothing. And that's what happens when you have people that don't take accountability for, for it. They'll find something else and blow that up so no, everybody will ignore the accountability. He wasn't even, like, dissing the LGBT community. And he says it out loud who he's dissing the whole, his whole career is white people. It is the white people that like to pick up minority like it's a trend so they can have an excuse to yeah let's be specific it. it's not all white people it's, it's not all white specific people. it's specific type that pick up and try to be a part of minority trends or whatever so they can feel like they have a right the people who made the tick the black tiktok a strike that type that type those type those who write on the coattails because them white niggas because mm -hmm. it's just like you said it's soon as soon as stuff got real and he got it and the dude got it in his face or whatever, whatnot, what happened? He turned tail and called the police. And knowing what police would do to a black. Man, that's that's my that's my thing. Like you know what they do or whatever. And and you can act like and fake even the people that deny what the police do know what they do. That's why they're yeah. quick to defend them, because they know if I need a nigga killed, I can always call the police. So that shit was awesome. He's a genius. Like it we was a we got commentary. Protect, we got to protect Dave off. Chappelle. And he gave me a topic. I don't know what's gonna be next. Be special for us to delve in. Shout out to Chappelle. If you have not seen the Rio's newest uh, Magnum, please go check it out. It's called the Closer. Um, and also check out the trailer with him and Morgan Freeman. It was just a great that, trailer. 
<laughs> it was amazing. Um, yeah, sure. But Chappelle yeah. outdid himself again. So salute to him. And I honestly think we didn't outdid ourselves again, fellas, on another episode of The Partner. Hey. Yeah, man. Um, episode episode 46. forty-six coming to a uh, close here, guys. Uh, we are about to mosey on to our beds and uh, get some get some Z's. But for sure, I definitely want to make sure we give y'all all the info. Let's get the housekeeping out of the way. If you want to support, <laughs> if you want to support, get in face a burger or something so he ain't got to eat the mic no more. Or if you just want to support financially, then. Holler at us on dollar sign, partner tears one, partner tears one on cash app. Or you can support us now on Anchor. If you're listening to this on Anchor, uh, feel free to go ahead and support us on there. It's $4.99 a month. You support and donate to uh, us continuing to be able to do it. It's basically like a, a dollar and some change an episode, a dollar and 25 cents an episode. So, you know, help us to continue to show on. You know, we, be, we be working to get this done every week, man, but we here. Um, <laughs> And if you want to actually sign up for a membership and get some exclusive perks, go ahead and check us out on buymeacoffee.com or patreon.com um, backslash the partners on both platforms. For as little as $5, you can become a member and get exclusive perks to unedited episodes, um, behind the stage access to us through our Discord, members only events, the ability to choose our topics yourselves. Um, exclusive panel access where you can join us for pods or for the panel. Like you get a bunch of cool stuff. You get merch. Um, you get promo codes for rtradeclothing.com. You get a whole gamut of free shit. So go ahead and sign up now for a little list five dollars on patreon.com, buymeacoffee.com to partner and that now. If you don't want to spend your money just willy-nilly, you don't want to just give to us, no problem. You can still donate and give us money, but you can also get some back. And if you want some back, for you want a hat, you want a face, you want a hoodie, you want some clothes, socks, you want some pants, you want some shirts, you want any type of pair, you want funk, you want your partner's merch or your archery. Talk to them about it, face. Well, like my brother said, you can go to rtreclothing.com. Once again, that's rtreclothing.com. A R T-R-E clothing.com. I'm your official site for all partners merchandise and once again all our trade clothing merchandise. Um it's a cornucopia of different uh, products there. You have um accessories such as face masks and hats. Um we have phone cases, iPhones and Samsungs. Um we have canvas bags, we have hoodies, we have short sleeve shirts, long sleeve shirts, joggers as well. Come check us out. Once again, cornucopia of different products. Come check us out, man. Artreadclothing.com. Indeed, man. Artreadclothing.com. Fact. And. 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 Say you just wanted to get in touch with us. You want to have a weekly conversation with us. Continue the conversation from this podcast with us outside of the podcast. You want to actually get responded to. You want to join a dialogue. Or you want to just see the funny thoughts and opinions posted. How can they get in touch with us? At T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That is the Twitter, the TikTok, Facebook, the Instagram. Uh, also on Facebook. Uh, I said also on Facebook. Also on Facebook, we have the Tiz Face Pat, all the partners. You can message us there. Um, if you just want to comment, get in touch with us or whatever. Or if you have any videos you want us to like react to uh, for you. You didn't ask us, but you could send us there. But um, either way, it was our, um, our methods of uh, communication at T H E P O D N A S. Indeed. We have a cornucopia. <laughs> I'm sorry. He had me weak because he we couldn't love say that, that word. The whole podcast. We love that word. I love the words cornucopia and burgundy. burgundy. Go back yes. and check out our uh, episode. Um, the book is a cornucopia. And something else you guys may enjoy for uh, speaking of social media, um, as Pat so eloquent. Uh, gave out the information. Our Twitter follow, Twitter follow, coming this Sunday. All tech, if all of these tech together, our live show. You didn't ask us, but will be debuting on there as well. So now, not only can you watch it on YouTube and Facebook, our Twitter followers, you will be able to catch the show live on Twitter as well. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, man, we're trying it out this Sunday, so salute. And uh, check us out, man. Um, for our live shows, DM us. Send us all kinds of cool you want us to react to, give our thoughts and opinions on. 
give us topics. Um, we do respond to fans. Um, we do respond to you follow. We do actually have the conversation, which um, when you're a member of the pod squad, it's like your family. So come on, join the family. Become a member of the pod squad. Whatever platform you do, go ahead and subscribe so that you can catch our episodes every week and not miss it out. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button for us. It helps us out tremendously in the algorithm. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. And then hit the bell. Because once you subscribe, sometimes YouTube will kick us out of your algorithm and try to hide us from you. And we don't want that to happen. So make sure you hit the bell so you get notified every time we go live or post any content. Um, We are pretty consistent and pretty active overall. This has been an off couple of weeks. Overall, we um, usually drop videos either every day or every other day. Um, Constantly putting out shorts. Um, So... Come check us out over here, man. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead, stick with us, subscribe, and become a member of the Pod Squad. And then, after you listen to the podcast and giving us your thoughts in the comments, come join us on our live show. You didn't ask us, but on Sundays at 9.45 p.m. on YouTube, Facebook, and now Twitter. And join us in the chat or hop up on the panel with us and kick it and get your thoughts. But that is our show for this week. If you can't remember nothing I just said, if you already forgot about what Faith said, what Pat said, the one in one end, not the other, and you still trying to figure it out, let me make it the partner die. One stop shop. Everything that we just said is on there. You can click it, you click it, you click it. All you got to do is go to the partners.com, click on whatever part of the uh, site that you, whether it be our social media, whether it be our, whether it be the rtrayclothing.com, uh, Part, whether it be our live show that you can get access to straight through to um, our website, the partners.com and detail next week. This partner.com has been your boy Tiz, and I've been along with the panel on here, y'all. I'm uh, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going through yes, it today. Yeah. Yeah. Going to, and I'm still yeah. tripping over face saying cornucopia, but it's the other third of the panel on here. And um, I am along with also dramatic pause. What's happening, man? It's Mr. Burgundy here face saying thank you you could have been anywhere else but you were here with us we love you come again indeed man see y'all next week for episode 47 check us out on sunday and please 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 check the link below vote 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 final four we need to figure out who our finalists are going to be so vote for who was as always man love y'all thank y'all for rocking with us please join the comments see y'all next week hey.